All right, folks. Let us press onwards. Uh, since we have done all the admission stuff for the swamp camp, we can still talk to all the gurus. We still have their permission. And it does kind of make sense that way. Even though we have sworn our allegiance to another camp, the swamp camp is always open. They will always accept members of the other camps. So, uh, that's probably why they're still approachable for us. I want to... Now, once again, he doesn't seem to have much new. He might have a few more scrolls, but they're not anything all that useful. Let's see if any of these are good for us. That sounds very nice. You can wear up to two rings, which is pretty typical of, uh... Pretty typical of RPGs of this type. That was weapons, right? Yeah. None of the rest of this is all that helpful, though. Protection against arrows? Nah. Surely we've got other stuff we can sell you to make up that money. I love how he nods every time you add something to the stack. That's always amused me. Alright, so now we've got... Oh, I keep forgetting about that am Oh, wait, we already sold the amulet. Apparently. Alright. So that, uh... That ore skin ring is very powerful. Gives us quite a bit of boost to our weapon defense. And, um... If you wanted to, you can report into Raven... Uh, every every time there's a new development in the um, in the whole plans of the swamp camp, it doesn't really matter. I don't think because you get a small amount of experience, but your total experience at the end of the quest remains the same, or it, like it averages out to the same. So I don't know. For example, if you if you only reported to him after the invocation, you would get say 400 experience. If I reported it to him now and got 200, then when I reported on the finale of the um, invocation, I would only get the other 200. I would not get another 400 on top of that. I believe that's how it works, because that's how uh, similar missions in Gothic 2 worked. I've just never paid close enough attention to this, so if anyone actually knows that for a fact, go ahead and uh, post it in the comments. I will put an annotation to direct people to... Uh, the truth. Now I appreciate you guys helping me a lot, helping me out a lot with this walkthrough. I know I don't know as much as I should for making such uh, an apparently thorough walkthrough. There are just a lot of little details I haven't quite caught. Just because I, anytime I play this, I just anytime I play any game really, I have a habit of playing it the exact same way every single time. So. There are a lot of things I just never got around to experimenting with to see see in what way the results are different. And you guys have helped me out in a lot of ways, including uh, telling me about uh, telling me about Dexter and getting the 50 ore from him. Uh, what happens if you give Aleph 50 ore instead of 30 for the uh, key to the storeroom? And um, what else? Oh yeah, Whistler's Sword, and how you can still get the approval approval point from Diego. So, you guys have helped me out in the uh, small details, which I certainly do appreciate. Truth be told, as I, and I've said this several times before, Gothic is not the game I am the most familiar with out of the original trilogy. Oh, sweetie swag. Out of the original trilogy, I would say Gothic 2 is probably what I'm most familiar with. Uh, it's just the one I enjoy the most. It's my favorite of the three. Probably my favorite RPG of all time. And even then, there are still little uh, little things in that game that have surprised me, even in the last walkthrough I did. Alright, so... Is there anything I wanted to do here? Not really. I'm just going to see if I can keep selling stuff to these merchants here. Skip might actually have, since this is a second chapter, Skip up the above might actually have a better weapon than the um, 
the sword here. What I might do, I might take these 10 learning points and actually learn the uh, top tier lock picking. I'll probably never learn sneaking and uh, at some point later on I will try and demonstrate the uh, pickpocketing mechanic, but the bottom line is the pickpocketing mechanic in this game just doesn't work as well as it should. This, none of the games really have encouraged stealth all that much. Um, and so the pickpocketing mechanic in this game is kind of screwed because anyone you could really sneak up on is usually around a lot of other people who are almost guaranteed to see you. And um, even the sneak skill doesn't really help you a whole lot because if you're in eyesight of anybody, they'll see you get in there. Sneaking only helps in that uh, NPCs can't, he can't hear you so you can sneak up behind them. It's not like um, Skyrim where it actually lowers the uh, ability of people to detect you. And so even that's not all that useful. So if you want it to be the sort of uh, cat burglar that terrorizes the entire outer ring by uh, robbing everyone at night, you can never really do that because they're going to see you. All right, let's have a word with fingers. For go, man. For Jones. What? Uh -huh. Now you know what? That might be why this is screwed. I think I've noticed this before. There's a glitch. Even though I had him teach me how to open locks, the um, option to learn that ability never goes away from his. What? From his dialogue, so I think it just might be it might be like an unfinished unfinished string, so I can learn it again. How can I? You're already Oh, I guess not. That's weird. How can I become an ex? I can't. Oh shoot! You screw that. Um, apparently you need twenty learning points for that. I thought you just needed ten again. All right, so be it. We'll start holding on to these. I guess we'll just uh, drop in on Raven and see what we can get for reporting in now. Hello? Hello. I just thought I'd report in. Good. I like being kept up to date. I don't really know what they're... Then why... No, that's weird, because I do know what they're Let planning. They're planning pass. to reach the sleeper. That's exactly what they're planning. I don't think there's ever any reason to talk to Gomez again, for some reason. Hello? Hello. I just thought I'd... Then go and see Raven. Yeah, so that's that. Uh, Gomez, he's not a friendly character, even to his closest... Uh, Hello, closest... Fred. um. Cohorts. Who are you? Bartholo's the name. I see to it that the ore barons get their supplies. I'm in charge of the lot, from weed supplies to food and provisions for the women. Also, it's my job to make sure those idiotic cooks do their job right. They should be grateful. Gomez won't put up with any crap. He fed the last two cooks to the lurkers in the river. Uh, of course he did. He's got a reputation as a scumbag to uphold anyway. Everything all right with you? Yeah, how about you? Who are you? I'm Arto. Arto. What do you do around here? I'm Gomez's bodyguard. Is that it? You don't talk much, do you? Nope. You don't talk No. Nope. Well, that's that. Now if you, what I said about camp burgling, if you wanted to go and sneak around the place, it's actually not all that hard to sneak in, uh, sneak around Gomez's estate, as it were, to be honest. Um, for the most part, you can get through the doors and everything, not really have to worry. What the bloody hell just happened? Uh, and there's a lot of interesting stuff to find there if you were so inclined. But uh, we're not going to worry about that. You will have the opportunity to loot the place later. Assuming that the game doesn't crash like it usually does. For Gomez! For Gomes. I could do with it. I could... 
And do you have any better weapons? No, actually, that's surprising. We just have more of the same. You don't have any more ore either. You son of a bitch. Alright, so be it. I don't suppose we have any forging materials. Nope. Not that it really matters. Already, already, already. So... Unfortunately, no one has given me a solution to the texture flickering, which means we're gonna have to put up with that shit again when we go and take care of the... take care of the, uh... mine crawlers, but so be it. You looking for trouble with me again? That's See ya. Take kind of funny. You can still pay him the protection money after you prove beyond the shadow of a doubt that you don't need to, uh... You don't need protection from anybody, least of all him. All right, so let us get ourselves back to the old mine. So once again, before you even take care of this, it is in your best interest to learn from this fellow. No. To learn from this fellow how to take the mandibles. Because even though we were sent to find something besides mandibles, something more powerful to uh, make the potion for Korkalam, he still will buy mandibles from you as long as you don't give him the alternative first. And he might even continue to buy them afterwards, but sometimes, for me at least, his uh, dialogue option to continue buying the mandibles disappears. Which makes sense, because he's not supposed to need them anymore. Alright, so... We have to find the crawler nest. Didn't actually mean to miss... Oh my goodness, I'm falling so far. Didn't actually mean to miss that uh, platform by that much. But uh, we are going to speak with Ian, because if anyone knows where there might be a nest of mine crawlers here, it would be him, wouldn't it? No one else here really matters. For Gomez. For Gomes. There must be a nest of mine crawlers somewhere here. There are probably dozens of nests here. Listen, I need to get to this nest now. I don't have time to see to it now. Our masher doesn't work anymore. The gear wheel broke a few hours ago. I've no idea where to get a new one. Just get me a gear wheel, then I'll see to your problem. A gear wheel? Where am I supposed to get that? No idea. I'm as much at a loss as you are. But there's an old broken masher in a side shaft. Maybe you'll be lucky there. Maybe. I'll just have a... Don't Wouldn't that just be convenient? So it doesn't tell us which side shaft it is. But uh, if you need some practice fighting mine crawlers, you want to see exactly how good you are at it. Okay. That was absurd. And we are not going to deal with that. There we go. Turn that back off. And uh, that... The ability to actually restore your health with Marvin Mode and, uh, you know, go from dead to standing again, it only works in the first Gothic. If you try to do the same thing in Gothic 2, um, everything gets screwed up because a lot of, a lot of things change once you're dead. There's new scripts that activate to, uh, make sure, you, for example, that you can't save your game after you've died to make sure that you don't actually accidentally overwrite, uh, in override a save when you're when you're intending to load it and things like that get in the way of continuing to play the game after your character has 
effectively died, even after you use cheats to re restore yourself to full health. It only works on the first one, so... Anyway, these guys don't really matter. But uh, if you want some practice fighting mine crawlers, there's a whole ton of them over here. So let's give it a few whacks. Now, unfortunately, they are one of the type of monsters that have the sort of back step. And we are doing very good against them. Better than I usually do. Not sure what was going on there. I was trying to block and he kept attacking instead. So once again, those input problems. I uh, see you see what I mean this is giving me a headache seeing all this shit and I wish it didn't happen oh wow now if you were to fall down there that leads to a new nest of uh not really a nest but a new tunnel with mine crawlers in it so if we got sworn by mine crawlers we would get hit pretty hard but we can take them down pretty easily, which is good to know, because uh, that's why I think it is so important that you invest heavily in uh, combat skills and strength in the beginning of the game. Just because any magic, I mean, you can, you can also do it with bows or crossbows if you're, you were so inclined. Actually, you can't even learn crossbows yet, I don't think. Only guards can learn how to use crossbows as far as I know. But... Yeah, if, if you invest in bow skills or sword fighting, it's very important because any magic you can get at this point in the game is almost completely worthless. It would do almost nothing against the mind crawlers, so it's not even worth investing in yet. Let's just have a word with people down here. This fellow's name is Viper. And that is an orc! What is he doing here? For Gomez. I hear you're the smelter. You're a smart boy indeed. I hear you only melt down part of the ore. Some time ago, we used to melt a lot down, but Gomez and the mages were not too happy about that. They hung around here for weeks to examine the ore and everything else. They fiddled about and stuck their noble noses in things they didn't have a clue about. Finally, we only smelted a part of the ore. The mages never came back here. Now, that whole little exchange there, I'm not entirely <laughs> too sure what the deal was, because, first of all, why would they even smelt the ore if it wasn't what they are going to use? Because, obviously, their main purpose for mining the ore is to sell it to the king in exchange for uh, the supplies they need. And so, how would it behoove them to melt down everything they use? Uh, it could simply be that they were, they were smelting it down just to make it easier to ship, that way they didn't have all this uh, stone with it that was uh, taking up space and making, you know, making everything heavier. And maybe the idea is that the uh, magic ore will lose a lot of its properties if you uh, smelt it and you don't really have the uh, knowledge of how to do it properly. I don't really know. I'm just kind of pulling at uh, strings here. Can you give me ore? If you can give me any goods... So he's got a stack of ore, and that's all he has in his merchant inventory. So he is someone you exclusively sell to, and we're going to take those mandwolves back because... God damn it, get back here. Because they're worth 10 ore apiece to everybody else. They're worth quite a bit more th than that to Kor Kalam. Don't need the flame ring. We just picked that up in the tunnel above, by the way. And we don't need this crossbow. I thought I had a, quite a bit more than that. We've got a lot of meat. Might as well sell him a bunch of this. They can surely use more provisions down here. And we've got enough that I can cook up on my own later anyway, so we'll just sell him the stack. Blueberries, not really a big deal. So one of those and something that's worth about three. Anything worth about three? Eh, good enough. All right, thank you, kind sir. And uh, there's a lot of Templars hanging out down here, too. These guys we will need later. They can help out quite a bit. Now, this seems to be the masher that isn't operable anymore, and apparently this orc here 
was the one who ran it, but we cannot talk to him. For Gomez. So this is our first chance to get a good look at uh, orcs outside of the intro. They're pretty ugly fellows. Very simian in uh, appearance. Now, from what I heard, this was years ago, like pre-Gothic three days. Apparently, Piranha Bytes was never really satisfied with the image of the orcs that they got in this game, which is why they were overhauled so substantially for Gothic 3. But, at least in Gothic 3, that was one of the changes that could make a little bit of sense, simply because um, the, uh, the orcs that you meet on the mainland are probably very different and much more educated than the orcs we meet here, who are just a tribal society who have been living here for thousands of years. And the ones on the mainland have had many occasions to interact with humans throughout the years. I, I've always just kind of wondered, I wanted to know more about the history between the orcs and humans and just learn especially how the orcs learned the uh, human languages and uh, if there was ever any 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 kind of like truce or peace between their cultures because it seems like the orcs have always been sort of I would almost say subjugated by especially the Nordmarians if you uh pay attention to a lot of the dialogue in Gothic 3. Uh, there was a character who said the Nor character among the Nordmarians who had said some something like if the orcs ever stuck their noses out of their caves they would get smacked. And so that sounds to me like the orcs were almost like living in fear. Like they were, they were living in caves, they were they had to live under the mountains and had to live in fear of the Nordmarians until one day when they finally were powerful enough to actually launch a uh, an all-out invasion of the Midlands. So it's it's almost like a Lord of the Rings in a way. Uh, there are a lot of people who argue that the orcs in Lord of the Rings are actually much more sympathetic characters. They were given an opportunity by Sauron, for example, to uh, to actually take back, uh, to actually like take land and uh, you know live the way that the other races lived because they were always subjugated by the elves and humans, for example, who pretty much made a habit of hunting them for sport, for example. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked again. What's with that work? He's our prisoner. He's lucky that the gear wheel of the masher is broken. That's why this son of a bitch is being allowed to have a break. As soon as the masher is repaired, it's back to work for him. He's not here to laze around all the time. Indeed. So that's all I wanted to talk to him about. They actually have two orcs down here, of course. And, uh... Yeah, that's the gist of that. The orcs are pretty much just enslaved here. Wow, you got some very intense telekinetic powers, buddy. I think you'd be right at home in the sleeper in the uh, swamp camp. Alright, so there are two more side passages down here. With some more mine crawlers in them. And, for some reason, if you go... It seems like if you go either way, it has a habit of drawing out the mind crawlers from the other tunnels who end up attacking all these guys. So, I think we might be able to prevent that from happening if we go this way first, but I cannot say for sure. And all that, uh... All that jargon on the walls is starting to piss me off. I swear to God, I'm blocking and... Come here. No? Fine. Oh yeah, one good solid whack. When they're sidestepping, they actually are not immune to damage, so... Um, that's a pretty decent opportunity to get some hits on them. Come on, then. See what I mean? So this guy had a stone crusher, how is that? Lousy. Got some potions here, always nice. Raven herbs. Those are only found in caves, I think, for the most part. And one of very few plants that will actually restore your mana in this game. I don't know why, but in all of the Gothic games, mana res restoration items have always been hard to come by.
Alright, so let's take another look down this tunnel. I'm doing all the tunnels besides the one that the gear wheel is actually in first. Just to uh, get these out of the way. You think you're hot shit? You're not shit. This one's slightly injured. I think uh, one of the guards earlier actually hit him. Must have shot the bitch. And uh, nothing really over here in this corner. And uh, of course, be sure to grab all the mandibles. This fellow here seems to have gotten boulder crushed a bit. And this guy had a bone bow. I'm not really sure what bone is made from, but it makes a reasonably powerful short bow. So uh, for anyone who has a little bit of dexterity, but not enough for the superior bows, this is uh, this is one that you might want to pick up. Up these here ladders, got another ring. This one is a ring of lesser dexterity, which puts us at 15. No, it's not enough to use that bow, but it doesn't really matter. In in uh, Gothic 2, I don't know if it actually happens in this game, because in this game your skill in uh, lockpicking defines uh, how likely you are to break a lockpick. In Gothic 2, uh, you there's only one lockpicking skill tier, and once you learn that, you can pick any lock, and your chance of breaking the lockpick depends on the complexity of the lock and your dexterity. So they they complicate it a bit more, but they make dexterity a bit more valuable in that game, especially to thieves. And I only wish that they took it further, because it seems to me, and in Gothic 3 as well, they did kind of expand the stealth in a lot of ways, but never really gave you good opportunities to use it. And, uh, since that point, they've only really toned down the stealth in their games, and that's a shame because that's one of the biggest weaknesses in their games, I think, is the fact that they never really give you a good stealth uh, potential. And that's one of the things I'm hoping they will include for their next game, one of the biggest focuses. But I, I doubt it will be, because it seems like from this point on, they're really really focusing on addressing the complaints of their players, which is a good thing in its own right, but it also means they're not really taking care of the bigger picture, in my opinion. Now, there's a there's a, one of the ore veins over there, which I haven't really done anything with, but you can't really do anything with them. It just it's, pulls you into an animation where you're mining and you don't actually get anything out of it. But that's the only thing over there, so don't be tempted to really try and uh, do these complex jumps. You can't even make this jump if you don't have the um, acrobatic skill. Alright, so there are mine crawlers down there. And we are going to uh, boldly go. After saving. Yeah. If you stand up here, this is actually a very good spot to snipe them from but they can find their way up there and eventually they will kind of run off to where you can't shoot them anymore so altogether it's not the um, ultimate solution there are probably a few more over in that cave and also remember that Aleph did tell us that there was a supposed to be a healing potion near one of the old mashers and this is supposed to be where it is. See the healing potion yet? There's the gear wheel. Thank god he didn't need one of these big hulking ones. For some reason, I don't think I've ever actually remembered to grab the healing potion, if it's even here, because I don't see it. Now... It seems like you can use the masher, because it actually, like, you can highlight it and it will focus on it, and you saw it kind of put me in front of it, but you actually can't use it. That The fact that it can be used at all is a script only meant for... Are there 
crawlers up here? I thought there would be. The fact that it can be used at all is only meant for the uh, orc slaves. Alright, let me pull out a torch. See what we've got going on in here. There's a vein of ore. So yeah, I don't see any healing potion down here. It's starting to feel like Aleph lied to us. What a bitch. Alright, now this part, unfortunately, is very annoying. Because these ladders are not really lined up properly. And the uh, surface you land on is not really ideal. This one, you see, I got stuck a little bit. If you jump, you can take care of that. But neither of these ladders really work. Because you see, for some reason, I got bumped out. It's because this ladder's sideways. Or it's, like, tilted at an angle. For some reason, it bumps you back out. And both of these ladders have the same problem. And so it's very hard to actually get up there again. But you can kind of find some places to jump. If you have the acrobatic skill, possibly even if you don't, we'll give it a try. You can get up on the scaffolding here and try and jump across. And hoppa choppa. There we go. Wow, that was uh, more than enough room. Okie dokie. And now we return to Ian with the gear wheel. He will give us... I think someone actually gave a suggestion, now that I think about it, to try and get rid of this. Someone mentioned the brightness? Contrast? Gamma? Nope, none of those affect it. So I'm sorry to say, no, that makes a difference. I, I wondered if it had something to do with shadows, but I couldn't find an option in the config file to disable shadows or anything like that. So I don't really know. For Gomez. For him. I have the gear wheel. Hey, well done. I think that'll work. Now, what about you? Just go Damn ask Scan and tell him to open the gate so you can search the dark shafts. Just tell him everything's gonna be fine. Then he'll know that I've given you permission. Good. I'll just have don't make it. Now I apologize that I randomly seem to skip through the conversation a little bit. That is just a problem I have where for some reason my uh, the middle finger on my right hand twitches a lot and since that's sitting on the right mouse button which skips the conversations uh that's just what keeps happening. Wow, they got this thing up and running quick. For Gomez. I see the masher is all been repaired. Yeah, we're fast when it comes to making people work. Uh, I can tell. So the uh, the purpose of this masher, even though it seems like he's just banging away at nothing, what this is supposed to do is they take big chunks of the ore, put it under there, and crush it into smaller pieces that are easier to transport. Or at least that's how I think it's supposed to work. Uh, so this is Ashcan, and he's in front of a very big gate. Very clearly supposed to uh, hide something. For Gomez. Or keep something in there. There must be a nest of mine crawlers here somewhere. The whole bloody mountain is just one big crawler nest. Why have you closed the shaft? It didn't matter how many crawlers we killed. More and more just kept coming out. Sounds like there must be a nest somewhere near. Let me open the gate. No. This gate can only be opened with Ian's permission. Nothing will be done before. Well, guess what I happen to have? Hey, Ashgan, you may open the gate now. I've already told you. Only if Ian... Ashgan, everything's going to be fine. And best regards from Ian. Well then, if Ian is responsible for this, but only under one condition. What condition is that? Just get me two or three tempers for support. I don't want to be here on my own when the crawlers come out of the shaft. Alright, fair enough. So you only need to grab two Templars. We're gonna grab three just because it makes it a bit easier. And uh, I think you get slightly better... Maybe you get a little bit more experience for completing the quest this way, but I can't really remember. Anyway, the only the ones with names are ones who are willing to help you. I know where the crawler's nest is. I'm going there to get something for Kalam so he can brew a stronger potion. Then you'll need my blade. 
I'll join you. Good. We'll meet at the big passage. So yeah, uh, every every um, Templar you send his ways another 250 experience. So help. might as well grab them I'm all. I'm looking for secretion for Kalam, and I know where the crawler's nest is. Will you be there when the passage is opened? When fighting crawlers, it often costs a lot of blood. If you bring me a healing potion, you can count me in. Eh, fair enough. Here, maybe that'll help. Thanks. You can count on me. We'll meet down below with Askan. I'll be there. Good man, good man. Now the only other one we can grab is up here in the uh, middle section. I need your help. I'm looking for secretion for Kalam, and I think I know where the crawler's nest is. If we open the passage, will you be there as well? The crawler's nest. Finally, my sword is at your service. Let Glad to hear it. And boing, boing, boing. Oh. Oh shit, I fucked up. Got a little carried away, didn't I? So unfortunately, the the guy up top takes his sweet time coming down here, so I'm not actually gonna wait for him. I just wanted the experience. Let's take a uh, let's, let's okay, get it going. Open the shaft now. We'll let the show begin. Let it be done. And this is very important. If Let you shut your mouth, shut your mouth. This is very important. It, if you, this, if you grab this winch. First of all, I can't grab it. If you grab this winch, and then let go, guess what, friends? You're screwed. You can never operate the winch again. So when you are ready, make sure you do not back down for any reason. Let me pass. I mean, of course, you can use Marvin mode commands to uh, get through the gate, but then you miss out on all of the sweet, sweet experience from these mind crawlers. Now, unfortunately, it's extremely dark in here, which makes it very hard to see all the mind crawlers. So you just have to you have to rely on the lock ons and the uh, health bars and the little floating names. Now, I'm getting wrecked here. Fucking hell! Thanks, guys. That was lucky. lucky for you. Oh, shut your mouth. Your We're working together here. Why are you harassing me? Hey, right, so that's it for them crawlers. How many? How much was the damage? Got one, two, three, four. Whoops! What was that? Five. Whoa! Easy now. Five, six. Seven, uh, eight or nine mine crawlers came out of this sucker. So that was fun. Now it's very dark in most of the areas in here, so you can kind of see how effective the torch is. Unfortunately, we have to take the long way around coming in. Which means lots of crawlers. Alright, bring me my torch back. So, there are sure are a lot of crawlers, a lot of mandibles, but... Still, so far, nothing we've seen. That is a uh, solid replacement for the uh, secretion. Now, this is gross. This is really gross. All these uh, tubes here. Very good attention to detail. You know, making this actually seem very insectoid. Very gross, and... Wow, I've never actually looked up there before. Now, what would be cool, you can actually kind of get in these, and you can follow them for a little while. It would be really cool if you could actually use these to travel around, though. There's nothing we can do here. So. But it's very, very gross. And you can see that this was probably a pretty big inspiration for the uh, character of Margoloth in uh, Risen 3. And that's why that's what it kind of reminded people of when we saw the early screenshots. Not just not just the tubes here, but also uh, something we're going to find a little bit later. 
Hello, beasties. Come here. Come on. And you too. Get over here. Where are you going? What is that? <gasps> that there is a Minecrawler Queen, and she is completely immobile. Uh, that is actually very alike uh, to many, um, the queens of many insect colonies, like termites and hornets, for example. The queens are completely immobile because they turn into essentially gigantic baby making factories, and that's what this thing is clearly turned into. Uh, because you can see all the eggs around it, and it's just producing, uh, mine crawlers by the horde. But, uh, now it's time. For your reign of Terra to end. And it's very easy to stun lock permanently just by using the left and right combos, so. A lot of experience from that thing. Doesn't have any loot, but it does have. I think about seven eggs surrounding it. And uh, that's all we really need from her. This. These eggs, as you can well imagine, is uh, a much bigger source of the secretion than the minecrawler mandibles are. And it's curious that the uh, the secretion, I imagine, is uh, sort of the organic uh, base material of the um, minecrawlers. Possibly something like stem cells. And that's probably why it's so useful in um, in the uh, in the potions to contact the sleeper. In, uh, because, like, I don't know, maybe there's supposed to be some kind of, like, uh, telepathic relationship between the, um, between the mind crawlers, and that's why, uh, their life essence in itself holds some of that telepathic power, which is what allows the novices and gurus to contact the sleeper through their cognitive, their telepathic connection. Well, this is dark and spooky. Ladies and gentlemen, let's take a hop into the abyss. Ah! Oh. Alright. So that's just a little shortcut. We can head back down here. And uh, meet all the Templars and Ashkan once again. Let them know that the uh, quest is complete. For Gomez. For Gomes. The Minecrawler shouldn't be a threat anymore. That's good news. I'll just send a messenger to Thoris. Good. I found the crawler nest. Wonderful. Now go back to the camp and finish this mission. Kor Kalam will be waiting for you. May the sleeper awaken. Indeed, may he. I found the nest of the queen. I thank you in the name of the entire brotherhood. May the sleeper continue to hold his protective hand over you. He ain't got hands, as we'll find Be out later. And you. I found the nest of the queen. You've shown courage and spirit. We need people like you. Well, you ain't getting me. me I'm already sworn to the old camp. Alright, so let us get ourselves back up to Ian right quick. Let him know that uh, we've taken care of business here and he has no need to worry about the, uh... No need to worry about the crawlers anymore. Or go. I found the nest. Then we'll finally have peace and quiet here again. <laughs> no offense. Good work, boy. Here, take this crate of beer for your efforts. Hmm. That's a fine reward indeed. Don't make Thank you very much. And now I'm just gonna take a shortcut back to the top if you don't mind. Nope, I screwed that up. Alright. So, we finished our business here, and that's actually the last time we will ever need to go to the uh, old mine. So, if you have any business that you have unfinished here, might as well wrap it up now, because we are not coming back. Hey, you did a good job with the crawlers. 
You deserve to be admitted as a guard now. Just go over to the old camp and speak to Thoris about it. Perhaps I will. See ya. Alright then. Ladies and gentlemen, next episode will see us return to the old camp. But in fact, we are not going to join the guards or even the mages yet. And it's a very important thing. Uh, it is critical that you do not join either of those sides because we have not officially finished the um, the task from Raven and you can only complete that task as long as you are a shadow so once you join the guards or the mages you are you do not answer the Raven anymore and he will not care about the mission anymore so do not do not take care of the mission or do not uh, be so cavalier about joining the uh, guards or mages or whomever you choose too soon and ladies and gentlemen next episode we will have uh, more to get our hands dirty with but uh, in the meantime I'm gonna wipe off all this uh, bug grime and uh, we'll see you all next time <laughs>